This is a lovely vacation suite, really. Um, which way to the snack bar? I'm gonna miss you, boy. I want a postcard from you every day, young man. He hates the kennel. Oh, well, Vancouver, here we come. You're gonna love it. <gasps> uh, Wishbone doesn't travel light. <sighs> um, Joe, our plane leaves in two hours. We better get moving. Okay, let me make sure I've got everything. <laughs> Your gym clothes and your dirty socks? Oh, Joe, you didn't. Well, it's my scent. It makes Wishbone feel a little less homesick. Mmm, home away from home. Yeah. Emily cannot wait to see Wishbone. Oh, I'll bet. <laughs> Ooh, is that a good thing or a bad thing? Good thing! Ooh, oatmeal cookies are my 10th favorite. Mm, and my 11th favorite. Anyway, I love them. Emily, what happened to all the cookies? He ate them all. No, that's not true, and he shouldn't be eating cookies. Emily, we've been busted by the diet police. David! I did not expect this of you. What? I found this upstairs in the closet. What? You know how important Grandma's vase is to me. But a vase is just a vase. I'd rather have you tell me what happened than to try to hide it. I'm really disappointed. Mom, you got this all wrong. I didn't touch it. David, it's not just the vase. It's the principle. I'm talking to David, Emily. It's important. But, Mom! Okay. What is it? I believe it is. What? Honey. Really? David, I think I owe you an apology. I shouldn't have jumped to conclusions. Emily, I gotta hand it to you. You may look like a little kid, but you faced up to a big problem. Being little is only a state of mind. Think about the story of David and Goliath. You can find this ancient tale in the Bible. David was a talented musician and hard worker. He was the youngest and smallest of seven brothers. They thought all he could handle was watching the family's sheep. It wasn't bad. Out in the meadows, he made beautiful songs to entertain himself. David also practiced his slingshot. He wanted to be ready to serve his king and country. He had no idea how big a part he was destined to play. Saul, the king of Israel, was terribly sick. He could barely sleep, and in sleep, he had nightmares. tried every one of these worthless elixirs. The potions of Egypt, of Phoenicia, of Shiva, of all the world. None of them work. Take them all away! They are medicine for the body, not for the soul. I need something to soothe my soul. Soothe the soul. 
Music? Music. That, that's enough. Next. Take them all away. Music is not the cure. Yes. Your Highness, don't despair. I once was walking through the hills near Bethlehem when I thought I heard the sound of an angel. When I got closer, I saw it was a young shepherd boy playing his harp. His name is David, son of Jesse. David? I'll find him, Father. Listen, you must have made a mistake. Why would the king want to see me? Father? This is David, the son of Jesse. <clears throat> My king, how can I be of any help to you? You're my last hope, David. Well, I'm not a professional or anything. I just make music for myself. Whatever comes from inside, that's all I have to give. <clears throat> why art thou cast down, O my soul? And why art thou disquieted within me? Hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him, who is the health of my countenance and my God. David, a little boy no one really noticed, was the only one big enough to chase away Saul's nightmares, and he soon became like one of the family. Do you have to leave now? I'm sorry, but they need me back home. Please thank your father for sparing you. You have been a blessing to us both. You will always be welcome here. I wish you could stay. Me too, Jonathan. But I'll always be proud to serve my country. I am so proud of you for telling the truth today. What made you change your mind? I don't know what it was. I just had a feeling. A feeling? Mm-hmm. Inside. <gasps> you know what that feeling is? That feeling is your conscience. Everybody has one. Yeah, you just have to listen to it, even when it barely whispers. It will tell you a lot of really important things. Now, what do you say we go wash your face with some cold water, okay? And don't worry about that old face. You've been very brave. Let's go. You know, the bravest heart can be in the smallest body. That's why I like the rest of David's story. Israel was on the brink of war with the Philistines. Bad times were a heartbeat away. All David's brothers joined the army. David got left behind. Father, the Philistines could destroy everything. I've got to help. David, there's more than one way to be brave. Your brothers will defend the nation against the Philistines. King Saul needs all the men he can find. I've helped him once. I know I can help him again. Son, you're too young for battle. Too young? I was the one who saved our sheep from that huge bear. I was the one who took on that lion. I feel it. I feel ready. 
I need you here. I need your strength and bravery to watch our flocks. The Philistines are too big for you to take on. It's not about big or small, Father. It's about faith. Something in me knows that I must go. It's the right thing. Honest. Son, tomorrow I was going to take food to our army. You go in my place. I'll take yours for the day. David set out full of hope. He reached the valley where both armies stood ready for battle. David thought he would find his countrymen fighting bravely. But something was terribly wrong. The giant, Goliath, had come. What's going on? Why is everyone so scared? Okay, so the guy's got a big shield, so what? He's a show-off! Okay, so he's a huge, face-smashing, bone-crunching show-off. Still, he can't be that bad. time and time again to offer my challenge. If any Israelites can defeat me in battle, we will surrender to you. And if he loses, you will surrender to us. Are there no men left in Israel? Ah! That does it! Won't someone take on that bully? Where are you going? Hey, wait! Come back! Israel, where is our faith? I can't believe this is happening. Okay, now everybody, open their eyes. Ta -da! Wow, Dad, that is so cool. Who gave it to you? I gave it to you. Oh, <laughs> one of those, I've always wanted this, you it's yours kind of presents. Which reminds me, I think I'll be looking for a box of dog treats for Joe's welcome home present. Well, if you're really nice to me, maybe I'll let you drive it to work now and then. <laughs> <laughs> Why aren't your parents driving it now? Uh, it's not big enough. After church, they take a whole bunch of groceries around to all of our older relatives. Wow. I'm in a car just like this. As soon as I get my license, I get an old Mustang convertible. We can cruise. We'll get in. Ah, uh, did you say get in? Bad idea. David? Mom left the keys in the car. You wanna hear what it sounds like? Sure. What's wrong with this picture? Oh yeah, they don't know how to drive! Uh, uh, David, maybe this isn't such a great idea. David, 
Do you know what you're doing? Of course. It's just another machine. All I've got to do is pull it up a little bit and straighten it out. Emily. Emily! Say something! Uh-oh. Oh, yeah. That pretty much says it all. the biggest mistake we've ever made. Mom and Dad are gonna kill me. Unless they don't find out. Okay, it's ready to be glued. Apply generously to both clean surfaces. Okay, wait 10 seconds. Join the surfaces and clamp together firmly. For six to eight hours? Overnight for best results? David, I don't think this is gonna work. It's gotta work. I just can't face Dad after this. <sighs> Do you smell that glue? Blah! Hey, David! Some of us still breathe oxygen. Mommy and Dad are gonna be mad. Mommy and Daddy won't find out, because you won't tell them, right? You promise? They're here. This should be interesting. Hi, kid. Hey, Sam. Hey, buddy. Hi. Hi, Mom. I'm just showing her the car. Yeah, it's really nice. Yeah, it's a beauty. Sweet. <laughs> Mine. Yeah, it's, it's all yours. Come on. <clears throat> Too hard. <clears throat> Too hard. David! Oh, my skull needs a break. David. What? I've been thinking, shouldn't we tell Mommy and Daddy what happened? Well, you know I'd do it for you, kid, but no one ever listens to the dog. Emily, this is a lot different from breaking a vase. I'll be in really big trouble if they find out. This is bigger than you can understand. So just let me handle it, okay? Brace yourself, David. She may be your teeny tiny sister, but she of the sticky fingers is right. Goliath would destroy Israel unless someone stopped him. David rushed over to find his brothers. Eliab! Abinadad! Why are you hiding? That gigantic jughead is winning this war without a fight! Why don't you challenge him? David, what are you doing here? Well, you think it's a show for your entertainment? Go home and serenade the sheep with your songs. If no one else will, I'll answer his challenge. You? <laughs> you can't even hold a spear. And even if you could, where would you throw it? His left or his right ankle? <laughs> <laughs> if he wants to try, let him. No one else will. Come. I'll take you to the king. Jonathan, King Saul. David. David, you've heard of my troubles then. It's good of you to come, but they won't be charmed away with music this time, however pure and divine it is. I don't plan to charm them away, my king. I mean to slay the giant. <laughs> with your sweet music? That music comes to me from the God of Israel. The same God who gives me the strength to say that I must at least try to save our country. Father, he has strangled a lion with his bare hands. And he stopped a bear in its tracks with a slingshot. Give me your blessing, and I will give you the last beat of my heart. The bravest man in my kingdom. The shepherd boy. The boy who makes music like an angel. Give you my blessing. 
You know I love you like a son. Now that I can combine your faith with mine, I am ready. This is where the dog belongs, at the head of the table. David, the plate is lovely, but wouldn't it look really pretty with some food on it? You know, David, telling the truth about Grandma's vase must have been really hard for Emily. Aren't you proud of your little sister? Sure, I guess. <laughs> it was so cute. This afternoon, she even found the need to tell me that she hadn't made her bed this morning. I tell you, she is so impressed by the fact that she has a conscience, and she can really listen to it. I just hope she doesn't turn into a tattletale. Well, what makes you say that? Ruth, look at this. Whoops! Family business? Um, I'll just come back for some leftovers. David. What? You dropped something. David, be careful. Getting a little tense in the Barnes household. Honey, what's wrong? What's wrong? This is what's wrong. I just bought the car five days ago and it's already falling apart. I was on my way home from work and went to adjust the mirror to stop sign and it just broke off like a twig. Look, it's not even bolted. It's like somebody just glued it on. See? See? You trust people and this is what happens. This is unbelievable. I I'm calling that guy. I'm calling him and I'm giving him a piece of my mind. I've been too much money for this car for this to act like this. this is... So what do you intend to do about the mirror? What do you mean there's nothing you can do about it? <laughs> well, there's plenty I can do about it. What? I I've already talked to a lawyer. I I'll see you in court, mister. David, can a person have two consciences? I don't think I'm the best person to ask about having a conscience. Because one of mine says to tell Daddy, but the other says not to get you in trouble. And I'm so mixed up. <sighs> Emily, you're not the one who's mixed up. I am. The reason you're confused is because I need to tell them. But I've been too scared. I'll go with you. That's all right. I need to do this alone. Now go back to bed. Emily, thanks. Your conscience is coming through loud and clear, David. You're ready to face your giant mistake. David was ready to face Israel's giant problem. I need five of the smoothest, roundest stones. So smooth they'll make the air sing when they fly. I will pop you one by one between my fingers. Hey, you! That's it! No more talk! I accept the challenge! <laughs> you have a problem? <laughs> what am I, a dog? To be chased by a boy with a stick? Laugh all you want, but today is the last day you threaten Israel. Why, I will tear you apart with my bare hands and feed you to the jackals and the vultures. Something inside tells me you won't. Armed with his fate, David defeated the giant and ensured the safety and freedom of his people. A pretty big feat for a little shepherd boy. The strength I had was given to me. I don't claim victory for myself. I'll try my best to live up to this honor. First off, let me say that it was really grown up of you to tell us. Go easy on him. He's a good kid. Yes, it was. But that doesn't erase what you did. So for starters, David, you're grounded. That means no computer for a month. Honey, you know we love you. And we want to be able to trust you. 
But when we leave Emily alone with you here, we have to know that you're going to be responsible. That means making good decisions, son. Right. If we can't trust you when we're gone, then we're just going to have to get a babysitter for the both of you. Well, but... So can we count on you? I'll do my best. I promise. All right, David. Give me one more shot. Thanks. You're going to have to show us all the pictures as soon as you get them developed. Okay. Can he eat ice cream? Yes, of course. Raised on the stuff. No, although I wonder what can't he eat. <laughs> Mom, my conscience says I better have two scoops. <gasps> Emily, what a coincidence. You're a mind reader. Well, are you sure that's your conscience talking? Or your tummy? Mm -mm. Emily, you look like you might need a hand with that. Can I have a little bite? Please? 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 Emily, please? Just one little bite, please? Please? I need something to soothe my soul. Soothe the soul? Music? Just what the doctor ordered! Music. But can music really make a good story better? So the next time you're enjoying my show, remember, there are a lot of musicians behind the scenes painting the perfect moods with music, which is why every show ends on just the right note.